This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I rejoice to be with y'all here this morning in God's house, God's time. God called us to this place uh, to do what we were created to do, and that is to praise God, to worship God, to thank God for all the blessings we've received. So I'm so excited to see all of y'all here. Um, as you probably know, this is a gold star Sunday, and so all of you get gold stars for being here the Sunday after Easter. Uh, we're, I'm keeping track. I got a little calendar in my office, and so uh, y'all all get credit, full credit. Uh, so uh, we would love it this morning if you would uh, register your attendance, uh, scan that QR code, and we could then uh, know that you were here with us. And uh, also I want to remind you all that coming up on Wednesday, we've got another fellowship meal, 5 o'clock, 5 to 6. And you really don't want to miss this one. It's uh, going to be Raleigh cooking fried shrimp with fries and coleslaw. And uh, so let Tammy in the office know if you're interested in attending, and that way we can make sure we got enough, enough uh, made. Um, this coming Wednesday after the Fellowship Supper, 6 o'clock, we're going to continue a series that we just started this last Wednesday, a Bible study series called Come and See. We're going to be um, going through the Gospel of John um, kind of one verse at a time, and it's, it's, um, it's really, really good stuff, and I hope that you'll, uh, that you'll join us for that. Uh, between services today, I'm going to be around. I'm going to be over in room 121 or in that general area. Probably you'll find me close to the coffee and the donuts. And um, would, uh, would love it if you just want to come by and chat. I'm going to be there just hanging out. <clears throat> Crazy Love Sunday School uh, starting, I guess, today in room 118. They're going to be uh, starting into a study of Luke's gospel, the stories in Luke, and some of the unlikely folks that uh, Luke tended to hang out with. And so with that, let us now go to God in prayer. Loving God, Almighty God, uh, we do thank you this morning for all of the ways that you have blessed us. Uh, we ask this morning that you continually remind us of all of those blessings, and we thank you primarily for the blessing of your son Jesus, the opportunity that you've given to us this morning to come and offer you praise and glory for sending him to us, to sending him to be with us, and for sending him to die so that we could draw closer to you. Loving God, uh, we know this morning that as much as we want to praise you and honor you and Thank you that we ourselves, by ourselves, are not up to the task, and so we ask that you give us your spirit. You fill each one of us here. You fill this place to overflowing with your very spirit. Enable it to enable us to be energized, to be filled with love and praise for you. Lord, we ask all of this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen.
Good morning. All right, so you've got kind of the B team going on here this morning. Uh, Terry shifted over there. Bree got called into work this morning, and uh, I've got about like 30% of my voice, so I'm going to need y'all to really help me sing today. So we're going to make through this service together. We're going to make a joyful noise together. So will you stand with me as we sing number 61, Come Thou Almighty King. standing with me as we say our affirmation of faith. There is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all, to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by the angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up into glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Sorry, I am much shorter. <laughs> Good morning. As we go in God's prayer today, I would ask that you take a look in your bulletin at our stewardship of prayer. Please keep our church family, friends, military, and community members in your prayers this week. Let us pray. God of resurrection. We know that you receive and bless all who come to you in humility. And so we come to you today with humble hearts and minds. Show us our false pride, that we may repent of all our conceit and arrogance, so that we may care for one another 
and so honor Jesus in all that we say and do. Lord, we who are your people easily grow weary. We complain and question. We put you to the test. Our mouths say yes, but our deeds say no. When we wander off of your path, when we fail to follow through on our good intentions, when we give our attention to trivial things, lovingly call us back to you. We ask today that you empty our hearts of anger and pride, empty our souls of greed and selfishness, empty our minds of envy, doubt, and mistrust. As you poured out your very self through your beloved Son, pour your spirit into our hearts today. Forgive us our wrongdoing. Reclaim us with your love. Send us out into the world as a people remade in your image, people of kindness, justice, and mercy. May we become more like Jesus as we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now invite our children to come forward for our children's sermon with Miss Beth. Okay, have a seat. Have a seat. I guess I'm going to turn and talk to you because you're not going to come talk to me. <laughs> Y'all look great this morning. <clears throat> well, you know what? Today we're going to talk about shining your light, okay? And we're going to talk about a couple other things too. But in many places in the Bible, you're going to find out where you're going to read that people should shine their lights in our dark world. Hmm. Well, in Philippians 2 today, it says, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you can become blameless and pure. And you know what? You can shine your light in dark places. Well, let's take that idea in the Bible about shining your light, okay? I want you to raise your hand if you've ever shown someone how to do their homework. Have you ever, have you ever helped anybody? You have? Okay. Have you ever served anybody, like if they were sick, did you serve them food or did you give them a thermometer? You did? You served somebody? Okay. <clears throat> and did you know when you do that, they feel good just having you do that, right? Um, have you ever um, helped somebody maybe that was needing a friend? Needing somebody to talk to. You too? Good. Good. All right. <clears throat> well, whenever, whenever we do things like that, it's like shining your light in a dark place, isn't it? It's leading them. It's helping them grow and learn in important ways. I've got an experiment to show to you today. This is an empty box. See how it's empty? It has a little hole right here. Okay. I've got this. And I've got... What did I do with it? Oh, there is candy in here, but I'm going to omit the candy. I'm going to show you one of these stars. And I happen to have a flashlight. <clears throat> now, if I put this in my hand, you can't see the star, right? Because it's in there. You know it's in there, but it's not shining, is it? No. It has to have something that makes it shine. So and we're going to put this, do this little experiment. We're going to shine. Ooh, that's a bright light. That almost hurt my eyes. Okay. <clears throat> so 
um, if a light is shines on this for a few seconds, we can see what happens. Shining the light on this star would be like the star that's you guys shining your light that you get from God. Okay, so whenever you go to to Sunday school and learn stuff, and whenever you pray to God, and whenever you help others, and all all those things. That's God's light coming onto you, and then you would be able to shine your light to others. You want to see what it looks like? Okay, it's in the box. You want to see the star shining in there? Look inside. You see it shining? What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah? All right. (laughs) That's my super experiment for the day. Okay. I hope you all like that, because I do. Because that's what y'all are whenever you serve others and whenever you do it. And one other thing, <clears throat> one other thing you got to know about being a shining star is the, it, it's very important that we're not, we don't complain and we don't argue because that sets us all apart from being like everyone else, okay? Okay, so sweet spirit. And the sweet spirits are in your bags today because it's got hugs and kisses in it, okay? With stars. And you get a flashlight too. All right, so let's pray first. Ready? Dear Father in heaven, please show me how to shine with my words today. Teach me how to be that light that encourages, that helps, and reflects your goodness. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay. All right, everybody. Come and get your bag and your light. We have a special, special treat uh, this morning. We have the privilege, the honor, uh, the joy of welcoming into our fellowship a new member. Uh, And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Josh, would you come on up? And through professing our faith, faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. So I am very happy this morning to um, present Joshua Stearns for membership in our family of faith. Josh has been baptized and is transferring in from another Christian denomination, and so we will, he will be joining this morning through what's known as a profession of faith. So Josh, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. And do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. All right. According According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church? And and serve as Christ's representative in the world. I will. 
All right. And so as we know, this is not just Josh joining us, it's us joining with Josh. And so I ask you, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If you do, say, I do. I do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Josh here in your care? All right. So uh, we have the extra privilege this morning of hearing a little bit about Josh's story and getting his Christian witness as to why he's interested in joining with us. So you want to just go up to the podium there? Good morning. It is a privilege for me to share some of my story with you guys, but... I'd like to be clear about this. I don't want to give the devil any praise in this. I want it all to be about God. So I'm going to be a little vague on some things. Um, I always measured success for myself in the world standards. I was in the military. I had a good job, good pay. I had cars. I had a house. I had been married for 20 years. My daughter, you know, love of my life, you know, 14 years old. Um, The problem was is that that was the only thing that I put as success. And that was the only things that I valued. Um, God thought that was a problem. And uh, he quickly decided that he was going to show me what the real measure of success was. So back in November, um, I was a a slave to addiction. I had a really bad alcohol problem. I walked away from the uh, military with uh, mental health issues such as PTSD. Um, My marriage was falling apart. And I was just going through the motions. I was in a car accident, uh, head-on collision where I broke both of my legs, my ribs, my clavicle. Um, I had to have my face stitched up because I nearly lost my ear and my, above my eye was cut up really bad. They had to do life-saving measures on the scene and uh, they found an aneurysm and had to put a stent in my aorta. So I'm in the hospital in the ICU and I am destroyed. I was, I felt completely alone. Even though my family was coming to see me, I was just lost. My wife filed for divorce while I was in the hospital. And it was at that moment, in that loneliness, in that that feeling of just utter defeat and being alone, God started to talk to me. And he started telling me that everything was going to be okay. I just had to trust him. And I had to walk with him and praise him. And so slowly, he started showing me that he was going to take care of me. The more I believed and the more I let go, the more he was there. And the more he was guiding me down the right path. My physical body has never been this bad. I like it hurts you know I still have issues from the accident I see doctors all the time my financial state was in ruins Um, you know I I lost my my wife my wife didn't want even for me to be a part of my child's life but out of all of this the ashes God created something beautiful Today, I walk with him hand in hand, and he shows me that everything is going to be okay, as long as I just trust him. So for me, it's all about praising God, because I am so thankful for him, and I'm so thankful that he never left me. It was me that turned my back. But now, I feel like I'm on the right path. Thank you, everyone, for for listening, and thank you for welcoming me into the church. And I look forward to being of service to the church. 
Thank you. God. Mm. Will, you, will you stand again with me as we continue to worship together this morning uh, with Up From the Grave He Arose. As our ushers prepare for our time of offering this morning, um, we always have been showing these stewardship moments the last few months just to remind ourselves of the good that we do in the community and the things that we do to show the love of Christ to our community. And the Easter egg hunt is, is one of those things where our community can come together and celebrate Easter together and it's always a good time. Even though I usually end up marshalling and those kids are hard to hold back because they want those eggs. 
And it's a, it's a great thing to see their excitement and, and their, their smiles. And so your gifts go to helping us do things like that on our wonderful Palm Sunday we just recently had. So if you would please pray with me as we bless our gifts this morning. Gracious God who gives all good things, this morning we are so thankful for the new life that Easter represents, for the work that you are doing in the lives of our community and the lives of our church. So out of that graciousness, we give back this morning. So Lord, bless these gifts, multiply them, and make them sustain our, our ministries and our gifts to the world that we can show your love to all of those around us. It's in your son's name we pray, amen.
Good morning, church. I uh, want to thank you guys for being patient with uh, Cameron and I as we, um, as he said, the B team kind of step in and uh, help out with service today. Um, and what a beautiful, um, beautiful witness that we saw from Josh this morning. So thank you so much for coming and sharing your story. I, once again, uh, tried to hold back uh, some of the emotional response to that, um, but um, thank you so much for sharing. Um, and in, in kind of light of all that, and in, we're still in the season of Easter, uh, the special music for today is Jesus Paid It All. <clears throat> now, I had originally planned for Bree to be sitting here and for me to be standing up there somewhere. Um, but that's not the way it is, and that's okay. So um, anyway, I hope that you enjoy uh, this tribute to um, not only the Easter season, but um, to Josh's story as well. So... Good morning. The reading today is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. 
Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work with you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and arguing so that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation in which you shine like stars in the world. It is by your holding fast to the word of life that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. This is the word of God for the people of God. I quit. <laughs> we got some applause going on. That's good. <laughs> what, what, what do you think when I say that? Are, are you thinking to yourself, ooh, I want to be like him. I want to be a quitter, right? Many of us, we follow uh, athletes. We, we uh, look up to them in some cases. I, I remember when I was younger watching Michael Jordan play basketball some of y'all may, may remember. Um, I don't even remember whether, I think it was a playoff game. I don't remember what year it was. I don't remember who they were playing. I just remember that game where Michael Jordan had like a 102-degree fever. He's got the flu, and he basically puts the team on his back, and, and they, he, he just refused to lose. He would not quit, and they ended up winning the game. Now, some of y'all may remember more recently there was a um, – Super Bowl, right, between the New England Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons. And um, the, the Patriots were behind, like 20, what was it, 21 to 3 at halftime. They were down by 25 points at one point in the second half. But Tom Brady, the quarterback for the Patriots, he would not give up. He would not quit. He, again, he put the team on his back, and they ended up winning the game in overtime. There was no quitting. And we admire that, right? We look up to that. We, we like people who don't quit. And on the other hand, we don't have a whole lot of respect for quitters. But I got to say, sometimes life can make us want to quit, can't it? I mean, sometimes life just seems like it's too much. So it may be one of those things where everything's going good, everything's great, life is good, and then you get the pink slip. Or then you get the divorce papers. Or you get the cancer diagnosis. Or you get the repo notice. Might be the, the really, really bad boss. Maybe the, the jerk coworker. Might be the bills that just keep piling up. The dog that won't start barking next door. The, the baby who won't stop crying. The, the, the lawnmower that starts up at 6 a.m. Saturday. It can all make you, it can all just be too much. It can all make you want to just quit. It can all make you want to just give up. So what do we do? 
when that kind of stuff happens. What do we do? Well, we know what we're supposed to do. We got a real good idea what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to go to God. We're supposed to, to, to pray. We're supposed to meditate. We're supposed to do whatever we can to get close to God, to, to turn our problems, to turn our issues over to God. But what do we actually do? I mean, let's get real. What do we actually do? And what a lot of us actually do, probably most of us at one time or another, is to come up with strategies to try and deal with all of this stuff on our own, leaving God out of it. We may not quit on, we may may not give up entirely, but we certainly quit on God. So we come up with these strategies. We try and control the situation ourselves. And one of the ways we do that is by complaining. Now some of y'all may be thinking, well, that doesn't make any sense. How does complaining actually control anything? Well, that's a really good question. It actually doesn't, but we think it does. We, we try and use it to do it. So if you think of the reasons that we actually complain, there's, there's really, it boils down to just a few, right? Sometimes we complain to get attention, to sort of control others into paying attention to us. Sometimes we, we complain to deflect blame, right? If we're complaining about somebody else, then maybe they won't notice how we messed up. We complain to inspire envy, right? If we talk others down, then maybe we get elevated a little bit. And sometimes we complain just to kind of exercise power over other people. To see that they get what they deserve. All of this boils down to one thing. It boils down to an attempt to control the situation. And a lot of the times, the way we we try and exercise that control is talking directly or indirectly about other people. Complaining indirectly or, uh, or directly against other people. And it's not just the big stuff. It's not just the Muslims or the immigrants or the Republicans or the Democrats. It's, it's, a lot of times it takes the form of Well, bless their heart. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Bless their heart. We, We think that sometimes by talking about other people, by taking them down, we can make ourselves feel better. It seems like we can't hardly help ourselves. We have to, we have to separate. We have to, I have to identify who's me and who's you. I have to identify who's us and who's them. And once we've done that, once as human beings we've done that, we start complaining about them, right? And all the bad, evil stuff that they are doing. There's a story. Some of y'all have heard this story, so if you have, you can just tune out for the next minute or two. Um, Kirsten and I, this is my last year of law school. We're living across the street from these people who I still believe were, were dealing drugs. So they were, you know, people showing up late at night for 10, 15 minutes and leaving, people, all different people, all different times of the day and night. And so one day I lost my wallet. And I was convinced that the druggies had taken my wallet. Now you got to remember, I'm like a third year law student. I am dirt poor. But I was convinced that those druggies in their drug-induced hysteria or whatever it was, they had come and they had gone into my house and they had taken my wallet. And so... I complained bitterly to Kirsten and to all of our friends and to anyone who would listen about these these drug-crazed folks who had taken my wallet. Now, you know what happened, right? A couple of days later, we're looking around in the cushions of the couch, and there it is. There's my wallet. Now, I don't know if they had any druggies in Paul's day, They probably did, but they definitely had complainers. And the church in the Roman city of Philippi had its share. Now, you can't really blame them. I mean, 
they had a lot to complain about. Being a Christian in the first century was not easy. Uh, it was definitely not an easy gig. On the one hand, you had the, the Orthodox Jews, and they looked down on you. They didn't like you because you're like some kind of crazy cult. And then you got the Romans, and they're looking down on you and persecuting you for the, exactly the same reason. You're this new religion they never heard of. And so they were getting persecuted. They were getting looked down on. They were getting talked down at and to. And so it's no surprise that the folks in that Philippian church reacted the same way many of us probably would. They started to grumble. They started to divide. They started to complain. And the Apostle Paul in this letter that Kirsten read to you, uh, he's, he says to them, look, all of this division, all this complaining that y'all are doing, that is not what God wants from you. That is not what God expects from you. And his, his reasoning was very, very simple. He said, be like Jesus. Have the mind of Christ. And Christ didn't complain. Jesus didn't complain. If anyone in the history of the world had a right to complain, it was Jesus, right? He leaves eternity to come into time and space as one of us. He could have been a king. He could have been living in luxury. Instead, he's walking around Galilee dependent upon peasants for his room and board. He didn't have to go to the cross. If anyone had a right to complain, it was Jesus, but he didn't. And, and it wasn't some self-help scheme, right? It wasn't to, to make him live a longer and happier life, although it probably well, in his case, it didn't, obviously. It was because of who he was. He was the personification of the love that is God. And love doesn't complain. Love, love doesn't divide. Love loves and love unites. Love loves and love Unites. And so Paul told these Philippians, he said to them, I want y'all to be quitters. I want y'all to quit complaining. I want y'all to have the mind of Christ. And, and that advice from Paul to the Philippian church is just as applicable to us today. See, our job as Christians, as members of the church, is not to attend worship. It's not to pray and meditate. It's not to serve others, although, although all of those things are extremely important and we should be doing them, but they have no value in and of themselves. Their value is in the extent to which they reveal the presence of Christ within us and enable us to be transformed more into that image, that enable us to have the mind of Christ. And when we have that mind within us, we are not going to complain. And Paul tells us in this letter why that's so important. And again, it's not a self help strategy, it's not so we'll live happier and longer lives. In fact, it's not about us at all. He says it there in verses 14. And 15, towards the end of the passage that Kirsten read to you, says, Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation in which you shine like stars in the world. In which you shine like stars in the world. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about those flashlights that Beth handed out, right? Any of y'all kids still got your flashlights? You want to get them going? Anybody got a cell phone? You want to get your lights going? This is what he's talking about. He's talking about being that light, being that beacon, being that beacon of hope in a crooked and perverse generation, being that be beacon of joy and love in a world that sometimes seems to have lost its mind. But 
the end of every worship service, you may have noticed it by now, I, during the benediction, I say something. Anybody remember what I say? <laughs> Got to give me some of that, Right? Live your life so that people look at you and say, i got to get me some of that. That's what he's talking about here. He's talking about living your life in a way that people see that light shining through you from Jesus. Living your life in such a way that you're seeing the good instead of the bad. Living your life in such a way that you are thankful instead of complaining. And so here's my challenge. So I'd like to challenge y'all to do. So I, I read somewhere uh, on the internet, so it can't be wrong, right? Uh, that it takes about 21 days to develop a new habit. So what I challenge y'all to do over the next 21 days is to be intentional about identifying those times and those places where you complain And when you find yourself doing that, or when you find yourself in that place, turn it around and identify those things for which you are thankful. Even if it's in a bad situation, you're going to be able to find something good in it. So do that. Now, I am am so happy that I had the opportunity to watch Michael Jordan play basketball. I am so happy that I had the opportunity to watch, uh, what's his name? (laughs) <laughs> Dak, no, not Dak. Um, I, I, I literally just forgot his name. Tom Brady. Uh, maybe I want to forget him. Uh, but I'm so glad that I got to see him play. Uh, I mean, there wasn't any quit there, but there's something that we have to quit. And that is complaining. Would you join me now in prayer? Loving God, um, We come before you this morning in Thanksgiving, not complaining about having to get up this morning or drive here, whatever. We come before you in Thanksgiving, Lord, in Thanksgiving for all of the blessings that you've given to us, for this day, for for your son Jesus, for the salvation that we enjoy through him. And Lord, we ask over the coming weeks that you carry that forward in our lives, that you make our thanksgiving not just something that happens right here and right now, but something that that we live in. Lord, we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. We close our time together this morning with trust and obey.
so now hear this benediction. This good word and the good word for today is thankful. Live your lives thankfully. Live your lives so that it doesn't even occur to you to complain. So that everyone around you sees that light of Jesus shining through you and says to themselves, I got to give me some of that. May the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the joy and communion of the Holy Spirit be yours today and tomorrow and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We'll sing the last verse of Trust and Obey as we close our time and leave this morning together. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear. Have a great week.